What a difference a few days make. Good morning from Inverness. Beautifully calm day. It's been blowing 25 knots up here for the last three days. So to wake up this morning to this beautiful view is, uh, is most welcome. Today is a special day on board because we leave the fresh water of the Caledonian Canal to get back into salt water, to sea water. Oh, and I've just sat down in a wet patch. Condensation, it's that time of year. Autumn's coming. So we get the morning dew back, just like in spring. Um, yeah, but we go, we're going into salt water, not just any salt water, the North Sea, the sea that we, uh, we spent most of our lives growing up to, all of our lives actually. So quite excited by that. Um, we're going to a place called Bucky, uh, which is about 50 miles uh, across the Moray Firth. Um, so quite a long day sail. Uh, it's going to take us about nine hours. Not really expecting much wind, but we're uh, we're on the home stretch now. So a little bit of a jaunt down the east coast, probably about 350 miles to go, and we'll get about 50 of those out of the way today. So everyone's excited to be back at sea. Um, I certainly am. Uh, yeah, Brill. Oh, a bit of a chart update. We're going home to about here, and we are currently here in Inverness. Uh, so today's journey will take us out of the mouth of Inverness, some shallow water to negotiate through here, but it's all well buoyed, nothing to worry about. Tidal stream's gonna be going with us. Um, so that's pretty nice as well, obviously. Um, we're coming all the way along the coast, past Lossiemouth, where there's a major RAF base, to Bucky. Here we are. Bucky, Bucky Harbour. We are in the final lock, the sea lock, which means we are going back to sea. This is the start of us being homeward bound, sailing here. This uh, this is um, you would think it would be pretty deep here. How deep is it? It's 3.8 meters. <laughs> That's mad. 1.8 under the keel, just going over Middle Bank on the way to Inverness Firth. Wow. The tide ripping through the North and South Channel here in the Inverness Firth. It's giving us about another knot and a half of speed as we go through the Narrows. Making seven knots.
Is it a seaweed? Oh, he got away! Oh my god, he got away! <laughs> You wait ages for a fish and you get two at once. You bird. He's talking to the seagull. <laughs> I'm not talking to you, am I? That's about the same size. <laughs> Rob's throwing that one back. He thought it was a bit on the small side, and we've already got three. It's enough for us. It's six o'clock now. Um, it's been quite cold today. Rob thought it was possibly sort of the first, the first hint of autumn creeping in, and I think I agree. It has been quite cold. Um, we are less than an hour away from Bucky now. And the reason we chose Bucky, um, we were originally going to go to Lossy Mouth. Lossy Mouth would have been probably about an hour behind us now. But having looked at the charts and the depths and uh, speaking with the marina, we've got a two metre draft. And they were saying, yeah, you'll probably be touching the bottom at low tide, um, just like soft sand. Um, and the same at White Hills, when we looked at White Hills, they've got a really nice long visitor pontoon but again we'd be, we'd be touching the bottom. So we've gone for Bucky which is a commercial harbour um, but supposedly very welcoming and when I spoke to the harbour master yesterday he was like yes, just give us a, give us a radio when you're on your way and um, we'll get you, get you in, it won't be a problem and they've got plenty of depth there. So we are looking forward to getting there and getting moored up getting the dog out for a walk and I think someone is looking forward to some more fish and chips. There's a fish and chip shop. <laughs> tied up on this pilot boat. Harbour master came to help us. So yeah, time to tidy up, get some food. So we are in Bucky on Yay. terra firma, the once famous fishing port, no longer. What they do now is they maintain the UK's lifeboat fleet. That's what their main business is these days. And a bit of fishing. Rather than herring, it is prawns and scallops. So <laughs> we are enjoying a can of Old Speckled Hen because we're on the East Coast so it kind of makes sense and uh, our dad, father-in-law, <laughs> natural father, bought it for us so yes. thank you Davy. And it continues the frying in Bucky. Bucky. <laughs> Let's see what it's like. Chips are crispy, they are, beef good. dripping, I tell you what Beef dripping has figured in the top five so far. You can tell the difference, can't you, between mm -hmm. beef dripping and like oil, different oils. Beef dripping, it has to be beef dripping to be in consideration, I think, from this yeah. day forward. Which is controversial because I know for a fact that in North Shields, our favourite chippy doesn't use beef dripping. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to <laughs> give that a go when we get back. Yes, we are. But the chips are delicious. They're crispy. The whole thing was fried to order as well. That's also been a common uh, factor amongst the top fish and chip yes, shops in the UK. They've all been cooked to order. That looks like a really tasty piece of haddock. Mmm. And it is. Mm -hmm. We need to get through this, we need a few more mouthfuls, and then we need to, we need to rank it. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Yui? Yui, what do you think? You gonna sit? Oh, that's a good girl. Well, what good. do you think? That was good fish and chips. 
I think it's in the top five, but I don't know where it sits in the top five. Well, it's definitely not in the top two because the top two is still Belfast, Long John's, John Long's, whatever it's called, and the good, and, one, in and the good one in Auburn. Not the one with um, that Italian, what's his name? The guy, who, the guy who pissed on Paul Young's rug in a burglary. Look it up, I'm not lying. <laughs> Gino. Gino. Gino de, Gino de Campo, former burglar. <laughs> um, so it's not in the top two. Uh, top th three. Other contenders are Fort Augustus, yeah. Monster Fish and Chips. It was um, unexpectedly good. Prices and Hollyhead, and Very the one good. that we can't pronounce from Aberdaren Bay. Aberdaren Bay, uh, Piss God. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, this one was cheap. It was nine pound thirty. Okay. I mean, a few years ago, that would have been absolute daylight robbery for fish and chips. But uh, it's actually quite cheap on in the UK at the moment for fish and chips. Um, so there's that to consider. But I think Aberdare and Bay was better, um, and I think that um, therefore prices. prices was really good as well. <sighs> It's difficult. It is. I, I think we boot, well, recency bias. I think we boot prices for this one. Okay, so it's number five. Yes. All right. Not that we're even remembering, <laughs> really. But uh, it was good. It was good. If, you, if you're if ever in Bucky, for whatever reason, um, give the fry in a go. It's got good fish and chips, good honest haddock and chips, Very had, good. haddock supper. I also saw deep fried pizzas. I mean, what the... What the what? But other than that, um, Bucky's really pretty. The buildings are very nice. Um, really old, big stone buildings with uh, like decorative features. And it's really clean as well. There's no litter on the pavements going through town that we've seen so far. Here he's eating grass. Yui. Yui. What are you eating grass for? You're supposed to be a wolf. The following morning we took Yui for a nice long walk, admired all the yarn bombing that had been going on in Bucky, and then decided to pop into some fishmongers to see if we could get some salmon and prawns to go with the lovely mackerel we caught yesterday. So without further ado, it's Skipper Rob's cooking show. So what do you do on a rest day in a commercial port in Scotland? You cook a delicious meal because you've got to keep your crew happy and you've got to keep your bellies full. Today we're going to be cooking a smoked salmon, avocado, prawn kind of chili mix, which is delicious, very delicious. And we're also going to cook the South American classic ceviche. For ceviche, you need really, really fresh fish. It has to be bloody fresh fish. Um, no, you can't do it with really with frozen fish or anything like that, to my knowledge anyway. So I caught this mackerel yesterday afternoon from the sea, from the Firth of Moray, or the Moray Firth rather, um, and I've skinned it, sorry not skinned it, I've filleted it, um, gutted it and so on, and chopped it into pieces about like one centimetre, half a centimetre across. It's important that they're all the same size so that they cure at the same time. But uh, yeah, delicious. So the first thing we'll do to the mackerel is get the acid on. This is the juice of four limes and the juice of half an orange. Your cooking is starting straight away. You want to get some salt in it. Be generous with the salt and use good salt. Don't use table salt for this. Now I've added some chopped or finely chopped red onion and half a finely chopped red chili. And last but not least, a small bunch of finely chopped coriander. Give it all a mix around and leave it to cure for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Oops. Cherry tomatoes, a chopped avocado, make sure it's a ripe one, half a finely chopped red onion, half a finely chopped red chili, some chopped smoked salmon, some chopped prawns, king prawns, the juice and peel or zest of a preferably unwaxed lemon, some chopped fresh coriander, extra virgin olive oil, 
and give it all a good mix around. I swear, if you make this for a loved one, you will get whatever you want from said loved one. You can serve these dishes with whatever you like, some warm bread, some flour tortillas, um, some taco shells. I'm opting for just slightly salted um, tortilla chips. They give a lovely crunch as you're eating both of these dishes, but you must have a glass of white wine with it. Delicious white wine, cold, beautiful white wine. Sophie, I think it's fair to say that both of these dishes are right up your proverbial street. <laughs> yes, no, I love seafood, uh, love all things citrus and avocado as well, and chili, it's just got all my favorite things in it. Yes, any final words? Yeah, dig in. And what's the verdict on the ceviche, Faye? I'm just about to try it. I'm going to try it without um, the taco. Mm. The flavour is lovely and that's just the right amount of spice. And the mackerel comes through right in the The end. mackerel is really soft. Yeah. Try it. Get the fresh fish in. Try it. That is so good. Why am I cooking so good? I don't know why I am. It's just what you do. That's who you are. <laughs> well, it's evening here in Bucky and Yui's going to go for her little wee at the bow before bed. Um, I really liked Bucky. I know it's not as scenic as uh, some of the places we've been, but I guess it reminds me of home, it reminds me of North Shields. We've got the RNLI over there, they've just come in. I'm hoping they've just been, um, I don't know, practicing, doing some uh, exercises and that they haven't been called out. But um, good fish and chips, good fishmongers, lovely seafood. Um, yeah, it kind of reminds me of home. Speaking of home, Join us next week as we continue our North Sea adventure and get this little Geordie, Mackham and Welsh Terrier one step closer to North Shields. As always, like, comment and subscribe. <laughs>